the Odake Leaf Blower. Cynthia Dine stares with NZR News. The microplasma bovis crisis has worsened significantly. With tests confirming the government's worst fears, the disease has now spread to politicians. Several ministers, including acting Prime Minister Winston Peters, have now been diagnosed, with a further ten ministers complaining of swollen, painful joints and massively engorged nipples. Grubby Soper reports. This morning's emergency cabinet meeting was the first to see the ministers attending in a state of semi-undress. The finance minister and acting prime minister among several forced to go shirtless as a result of acute mastitis, making their nipples so sensitive even a sideways glance could result in excruciating pain. Just minutes ago, Winston Peters fronted the media in a testy tete-a-tete. Look, Sunshine, we said we'd deal with this problem and we've dealt with it. How? By putting our bodies on the line. To people who say that this government hasn't done enough. I ask, what, what the? Get off me, you idiot. You just touched my nipple with your damn microphone, you jumped up little shits. Oh, oh, what's happening? Mr. Peters is now recovering in the Beehive sick bay. The cabinet must now decide if the outbreak can be managed within the Beehive or if a full scale cull will be necessary. At Parliament, this is Grubby Soper. Grubby Soper at Parliament. There are fears that M. Bovis may already have spread to Jacinda Ardern, but MPI has been at pains to emphasise that, even if infected, the disease will not affect the Prime Minister's milk. Recapping the main headlines. Neil Finn has left Fleetwood Mac, citing irreconcilable cultural differences, after the band's rhythm section failed to play in time during a rendition of The Māori Strum. Rocket Lab has launched a search probe for Eliza McCartney after the record-breaking pole vault tricks failed to return to Earth after jumping her personal best last week. And all-black Geordie Barrett is to be microchipped following an early morning incident in Dunedin. A small bell has also been placed around his neck and residents have been asked not to feed him. And that's the news. You're back with Ken Oath, the voice of reason. Now, this is a little hard. Uh, How do I say this? Uh, This may be my last broadcast. There has been an allegation made against me. False, of course, but in this current climate, I'd be a fool to assume I'll get a fair hearing. If indeed this is the case... I just wanted to uh, leave you with... Ken, um, um, Ken, the police are here. Oh, God, they look like 12-year-olds. All I did was I'd gone through the door marked push, then one that said Paul, and there she was wearing a name tag right on a very ample bosom, and her name was Pat. I mean, who who wouldn't... uh, Don't wave at me, constable. Of course it's locked. I'll come out when I'm good and ready. Don't you push that... Are you sick of arguing with ill-informed dinosaurs who only see the world in black and white privilege? Or perhaps you're simply worried Mum is going to mistake your new Sri Lankan boyfriend for the Uber driver. Then you need the latest homeopathic treatment for everyday racism and common conservatism. You need Woka Cola. All new Woka Cola is the world's only 100% natural treatment for prejudice and the debilitating effects of age-related conservatism. Just ask property investor Sir Bob Jones. Bob Jones here, for Christ's sake. This is the sort of rubbish I expect Gareth Bloody Morgan to fall for. New age claptrap for the dribbling, feeble-minded, or so I thought, until my secretary slipped some Woka Cola into my sherry as a prank. And by God, this stuff actually works. Within hours, I'd bloody well gone gay and joined the damn Green Party. And get this, I'm off to Toreo lessons tonight. Nah, me here, you buggers. Go ahead, caller. Oh, oof, what's happening? 